In this video we demonstrate the equivalence of the results from using both an ANOVAR and a t-test calculation. In the data we have four replicate measurements from each of two rivers A and B and we wish to test for a difference in the pH values of these two rivers. And we can plot this data on this xy graph by first of all coding the rivers with the x values 1 and 2. So that we then have four data values at each of 1 and 2 on the x scale giving the pH values of the two rivers. We will be using a regression measurement to test whether a possible best fit straight line through the data could actually have a horizontal slope. If the slope could be horizontal then this would imply that it is possible that there is no difference between the mean values of the populations from which the two samples were drawn. Looking at the data, the actual best fit straight line is drawn with an apparent negative slope, implying that river A or river 1 has a higher pH than river B or river 2. However, we've also drawn these dashed lines, which gives the 95% confidence limits within which it is possible that a best fit straight line could be drawn. And we see that within these limits it is indeed just possible to draw a horizontal line with zero slope to fit between these two data sets. So within the 95% confidence limits it is just possible that there is actually no difference between the true means of the two rivers and this suggests that we should not reject the null hypothesis that the pHs of the two rivers are actually the same. We will now confirm this by using the ANOVAR analysis. We start by looking at how much information we have in our data and the number of data values is 8. So the bits of information we have to analyse the variability in the data is then equal to the total number and then minus 1. So we have a total of 7 degrees of freedom for the ANOVAR calculation. In the regression calculation we are measuring the slope just between two levels. So this gives us 1 degree of freedom in regression. Allowing then a total of the initial 7 minus the 1 for regression. A total of 6 degrees of freedom for the uncertainty in the residuals. To calculate next the sums of squares, we can calculate the total sums of squares by calculating the total variance in the y values. So we use the sample variance and highlight all the values and we must multiply that by the number of degrees of freedom here, which is n, in this case minus 1. To calculate the uh, sums of squares in the uncertainty residual values, we first of all calculate the standard error of regression, and this is using the Excel function STEYX, where we highlight the Y values and then the X values. And then we calculate the residual sums of squares by first of all squaring the standard error of the mean, that's up arrow 2, and then we must multiply by the degrees of freedom, which is n minus 2, and then we can get the sum of squares for regression as just being the difference between these two values. So we have the sums of squares for the different elements both the regression calculation and the uncertainty in these measurements. We can then calculate the equivalent mean square value by dividing by the degrees of freedom, the sum of squares divided by the degrees of freedom. 
and we can copy this calculation down for the residuals. The hypothesis test depends on assessing whether the mean square for the regression calculation is significantly larger than the mean squares for the residuals. Or is it possible that this observed mean square for regression just occurred by random chance? And for that we use the f-test and the f-statistic is then just the ratio of the two mean square values and then we must calculate the p-value or the probability that this f-value or a larger one occurred by chance and to do that we use the f distribution but since this is a one-tailed test looking for f being larger than a given value we use the upper or right hand part of the distribution we enter the f value which is in h5 we then enter the degrees of freedom for the regression the degrees of freedom for residuals giving a p-value of 0 0.052 and this suggests that we should not reject the null hypothesis it is possible within the 95% confidence interval that there is no difference between the mean values of these two rivers, confirming what we found with the horizontal straight line. We can also do the t-test directly using the Excel function t-test for which we must highlight the two arrays or the two samples sample 1, sample 2. We identify that we are performing a two-tailed test and we are assuming both in the t-test and in the assumption within the ANOVA that both rivers have the same variance in their pH measurements which is a 2 and this t-test also gives the p-value of 0 0.052, agreeing with the ANOVAR analysis and also agreeing with our diagrammatic interpretation.